This video tutorial explains how to create Kanban boards in AwareIM. We can see an example of a Kanban board in the issue resolution sample application. Let's have a look. Here I have the issue resolution sample application deployed. I will click on the Kanban board menu item and the system shows me a Kanban board that consists of three columns, open issues, closed issues and deferred issues. I can move any issue from one column to another one and the system changes the status of the issue object accordingly. Here for example I move the issue from the open to the closed column and back and the status of the issue becomes closed and then open again. I can also click on any issue and the system displays the form of the issue. Of course you can have a look at the configuration of this sample application and see how this has been configured. But to make it a little more interesting, let's configure it again from scratch. So let's go to the configuration tool, open the issue resolution application and configure our own Kanban board. The first thing you need to do is define a query. The query should retrieve all items shown in all Kanban columns. So let's define a query that returns all issues. And we will also sort these issues by start time in descending order. Let's now click on the display as property of the query. We can see that there is a Kanban board option among the presentation options of the query. Let's select it. We then need to define the properties of our board. First of all, we need to define an attribute that will determine the contents of each column. We are displaying issues with the open, closed and deferred statuses. So the attribute that we need to define is status. When we add columns to the board, we will define specific values of this attribute for each column. This is the most important property. All others are optional. Let me quickly go through them. Index attribute. This property is only important if you want to preserve the location when the user dropped an element. For example, if the user drags and drops an issue from the open to the close column, the value of the status attribute will be changed to closed. But the next time the columns are displayed, the order of issues in the closed column will be defined by the order used in the query. So the issue will probably not be displayed in the same location anymore. However, if you define an index attribute and get the query to sort by this index, then AwareIM will automatically save the correct index and the issue will always be displayed in the same location where the user dropped it. Process. AwareIM will automatically change the value of the attribute when the user drags and drops an, an item from column to column. If you want to do some extra processing, you can specify a process that will be called after this. The dragged item will be given as input to this process. Column width and height define width and height of each column in pixels or percent. If in percent, specify the percent sign explicitly. Board width and height specify optional width and height of the entire board. We will specify 380 pixels as the width of the column and won't worry about other values. Now we need to add columns to the board. First of all, we need to define a value that determines the contents of this column. The first column shows open issues, 
so the value of the status attribute for this column should be open. A column is displayed inside a container div element and we can specify a style or class of this element. Let's not worry about this for now. Let's specify the right margin of the column. A column can contain a header and footer and we can specify their HTML contents. For now, let's leave it blank. We do need to specify the HTML snippet defining the body of the element. This is very similar to defining a custom query. For more details, please watch the video tutorial about custom queries. Just like in a custom query, we can refer to attributes of the object retrieved by the query using curly brackets. So let's define a div element that displays the subject of this issue. In this area here, we can define whether it should be possible to drop items of our column into other columns. We should allow the user to drag and drop from any column to any other column, so let's leave the default value of all columns selected. They should all display the same thing, and the only difference will be the value of the column. Let's save the query and add it to the menu of the application. Let's see now how this works. So now we have a new menu item and when I click on it, I can see our Kanban board. It looks very basic and requires some starting, but it works. You can see that the system displays all the columns correctly and we can drag and drop issues between columns. Let's now add a header to the columns that will show the title of the column and display how many issues are in the column. Let's open the column for editing. And add the following snippet for the header. In the header and footer, we can refer to attributes using the standard expressions enclosed in double angular brackets. Let's add the appropriate header to each column. Let's also make sure that the form of the issue is displayed in a pop-up window when the user clicks on an issue. To do this, we will define a default operation with records. Let's see now how this works. 
So now we can see that the title of each column is properly displayed and each column contains the number of issues that it has. And now if we click on any issue, we can see its form. Well, that's pretty much it. The rest is just a matter of CSS styling of items, headers and footers. Let's now look at the original Kanban board query. We can see that the HTML of the headers and items are a lot more sophisticated. This is the HTML of the item, for example. It includes conditional display of the issue's priority based on its value. You can also see that HTML elements are assigned CSS classes, like here, for example. We can see how they are defined in the custom CSS file of the issue resolution application. Here we have a section that, uh, that is re related to Kanban classes. You can also use other properties of the query as usual. For example, you can change the panel header of the entire board. You can define panel operations for the board. You can define operation with records. If there's more than one, they will be displayed in the context menu and other properties as well. As you can see, the Kanban boards is a very handy feature in OARM.